So is there an ideal, uh, you know, of course all your clients are business owners, I'm guessing. Yes. Is there yeah, an ideal business, business size or business type that you would say is your ideal client that you can provide the most value to? Yeah, yeah, well, um, yes. Um, you know, ultimately, um, the businesses that are owned by individuals are a lot easier for me to work with than, say, corporations owned by shareholders. Mm -hmm. or, and even when you start to get multiple owners, it, it really gets hard, as we know sometimes. Um, but that also kind of determines the size as well. I mean, it, for, for, a, for a big corporation, a lot of times, if that big corporation's processing cards, they've got extensive amounts of equipment, they've got dedicated people who do this, um, you know, that service aspect isn't quite the same as that um, sole proprietor or store owner who doesn't know technology, right? So maybe, maybe the right way to say it is at the point where that business crosses the line and they actually into the point where they have their own tech support. They afford you know, to pay someone right, internally. Right, right. They're, 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 somebody's on staff to do this stuff, all right, probably not my client. Um, okay. And also the fact that when you start getting that big, they squeeze the margins on things yeah. so much that there's probably not a lot of room for me to save money for them either. That makes sense. Um, but, you know, to my advantage, we're out here in relatively uh, rural <laughs> northern Minnesota. Yep. Most of the businesses around here are, are not the franchise extensive organizations, um, they're the little mom and pop shops. Yep, yeah, absolutely, that makes sense. So you, you've mentioned uh, location a couple of times. For anyone who doesn't know, we both live in Thief River Falls, Minnesota, which is about 50 miles east of the North Dakota border and 60 miles south of the Canadian border. Is that relatively yep. close, I think? I'm, yeah. Geography is not my strong suit. But <laughs> with that in mind, from a location standpoint, is there a target market there where right. You don't go too far, or you know, what does that look like from a you know, if you were to pinpoint a map, how how far do you really travel to service clients, right, or are you right, trying right. to travel? Because I'm sure it's not advantageous for you to drive to well, that, know, that's South right. Dakota, right, right. Uh, was, you know, within a couple hours of Thief River Falls um, is generally where I work. Although I had an inquiry from Idaho the other day. Really? Like, can can I? Can you can you help me out? And the answer is absolutely, I can help you out. Now I'm not going to be able to provide on-site support the yeah. way that I do for for most of my clientele, but that doesn't mean I can't answer your questions and maybe find you a great solution. Um, it turns out that they were um, a CBD shop, and the right answer for CBD right now is none of our processing is really that oh, really? good. Um, uh, should I say it? I don't know. Square, <laughs> you guys, for CBD shops, Square, you kind of, kind of run under the radar because the banks won't don't won't touch CBD. Okay. So with Square, you get sucked into a big enough pool that nobody really notices. But with any of the individual processing that I'm brokering, yeah, um, they I, we tried to do the. Um, a racquetball here at Club and Town, okay. and you pop onto their website and it says we sell CBD. Well, now you're not getting any processing. That's interesting because yeah. CBD is technically legal. So technically, it's, it's, it's right? Just, we we know it's, it's just, just too early. It's just yeah. It's okay. just it, it, you're in the early days. They tied hemp to yeah, to cannabis, and and the, and technically, can the banks really process it or not? Yeah. Is and none of the banks want to take the risk. A so money not math. We, we're we, not going to get into we it. Digress. But yes, we digress. Most, it's, it's, I, I would say yes, it's very so, common. You know, Idaho, yeah. if, if it turned out to be a viable business, uh, absolutely, I can I can manage it remotely. That's yeah. the way most people in this business really work. Yeah, um, that's fair. And like, I was just going to say, we're not going to get into it, but it's fair. Most people don't differentiate the difference between all these things. Yeah. But too early, it makes sense. Nothing illegal there. It's just yeah, nothing. So, nothing yeah. Um, so basically, what I just kind of read because we kind of went down a little bit of rabbit hole there. Yep. You're willing to work with anyone, but if you want in person, like you're going to drive to their shop, it's got to be within a couple hours for it to be efficient yeah, for yeah, your yeah, business. Yeah, Is that fair? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm out to the middle of uh, North Dakota, um, Langdon, you know, uh, okay. I mean, Devil's Lake. Yeah, I, it's a I've, bit of a I've job. got some, you know, a couple hours out there from yeah. where we are now, and then the other direction too. Um, I've got some stuff in Hibbing on the other side of the okay. uh, state of Minnesota, so that's probably about three hours, and then down towards the cities, St. Cloud and okay. Minneapolis, which are about four hours, five hours. Yeah. Away, so. Oh, so actually, that's pretty much most of Minnesota that covers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it makes for it makes for a trip sometimes, but um, uh, we were just doing an installation in um, Purim. Okay. The other day. So yeah. Purim is about two and a half, 
uh, maybe about two hours. Yeah, something like south that. South of us. Yeah. Well, good. That that gives a good idea for kind of what the, the net you're casting for yeah. people you're willing to, you know, helping the most. So, yeah. Hey, um, shout out for 